My name is Will Steffen. I'm an Earth System scientist, and I'm here to talk about my favorite topic, the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is a new concept in the history of our planet. It was first coined by the uh, atmospheric chemist Paul Crutzen. So the Anthropos, of course, refers to us humans, and the C-E-N-E -E -E ending refers to a geological time period. So here's our reference period, the Holocene. This is now a 100,000 years record of Earth's temperature, but it's this last nearly 12,000 years of relatively stable conditions compared to an ice age. This is when humans first developed agriculture, villages, cities, and we've thrived during this period of the Holocene. So the question is, can we actually gather evidence to say whether or not we are still in the Holocene? So first of all, we looked at the Anthropos side, and we looked at what we called the human enterprise. And what we saw when we plotted the data from 1750, or as early as we could get them, was remarkable. We thought we would see a nice even curve from 1750, beginning of the Industrial Revolution, but we didn't. In virtually all of these, we see a little bit of an increase, not a whole lot happening, until this year, 1950, mid-20th century. But in each one of these, we see a remarkable increase in the magnitude of these parameters, whether it's economy, whether it's resource use, and so on. But then we said, we have to look at the other part of the word, the C-E-N-E, -E, which refers to the Earth system. And we did the same thing. We started from 1750, and we went to 2000, and now 2015. So what we did here was to look at six parameters which characterize the geosphere, the non-living part of Earth. So what you can see here when we look at the famous greenhouse gases, loss of ozone, atmospheric temperature, ocean acidity, we start to see that these are moving too. Not always precisely at 1950, but it's remarkable how many of them actually show changes in their rate around the mid-20th century. And we can say two things about these graphs. One is they are outside of Holocene norms. We can go back to the paleo record, the geological record, and look at what these look like for the past 12,000 years. These are all outside of Holocene norms. And the second thing we can say for sure is the major driver are human pressures, not natural variability in the Earth system. We are in the Anthropocene. It is driven by humans. It's a rapidly changing trajectory of the Earth system away from the Holocene. The other big part of the Earth system is the living part, the biosphere. Nature is declining globally at rates unprecedented in human history. About one million animal and plant species are now threatened with extinction, many within decades. And that would amount to the sixth great extinction event in the entire history of Earth. The web of life on Earth is getting smaller and increasingly frayed. This is an amazing statistic that really hammers home how much we dominate the biosphere. If you could weigh every living animal on land that has a backbone, vertebrate, you would find that our domesticated animals, our pigs, cattle, chooks, account for two-thirds, 67% of all that mass. We humans, just our own bodies, we account for 30%. And all wild creatures, whether they're kangaroos, elephants, zebras, what have you, account for 3%. We humans weigh 10 times more than that. I can't think of a better indicator for the Anthropocene in, the, in that enormous domination of the terrestrial biosphere. But I want to jump back now to an Earth system perspective and talk about where we might be going. And I should add that the Anthropocene is not a stable geological epoch or stable state of the Earth system. It's a trajectory, a fast trajectory away from the Holocene, probably away from the Pleistocene as well. So we can look at the, the temperature record. This is the, the influence up till now, about a 1.1 degree temperature rise. By the way, the difference between the last ice age and the Holocene was about four degrees in global average temperature. So we're now a quarter of the way in terms of changing the temperature, but in the opposite direction, making it hotter. On this temperature scale, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. So here's where we are now. You can see the 1.1 here. These are the Paris targets, 1.5 to 2 degrees. So we're trying to keep temperatures somewhere within that range. But this is where we're going now. If we just keep emitting like where we are today, Australia, other countries keep pretty much doing what we're doing, we're going to hit at least 3. And a worst case scenario, of course, is 4.5 or 5 degrees. And most people think that we will not be able to survive that much change in climate that fast. So that's what we face. And when you look at it in the proper time scale, you can see what an emergency this actually is. But what I want to talk about now is to go back to the Earth system and how it behaves. 
and talk about this concept of tipping points. We think that many of these tipping points are vulnerable to temperature rises in the span of 1.5 to 3 degrees. And we're approaching 1.5. We'll probably pass 1.5 in a bit over a decade. So we need to take this seriously. And the problem is, once we start tipping them, they will push the Earth system on their own up to the higher temperatures. We won't be able to stop it. So there is a, sort of a point of no return in this trajectory that you really don't want to push the Earth system past or will be in real trouble. We published an earlier paper which tried to put this into this little cartoon. It's a stability landscape. Where these are stable states of the Earth system. This is an ice age. And this little valley here is the Holocene. And so over the last 1.2 million years or so, and the Earth has just oscillated, rolling up and down between the ice ages and the warm periods. But already today, we're pushing the Earth away from the next ice age. In fact, we think we've already missed the next ice age. The other option is to meet the Paris Accord start regenerating the biosphere, living in different ways that we look after the planet as our indigenous colleagues have done for thousands of years, called Earth System Stewardship, and park the Earth in what we call stabilized Earth. I'm going to close by the longest continuous civilization on planet Earth, indigenous Australians. There's a lot of wisdom embodied in indigenous Australians, and I think they have some very good pointers for how we need to go forward in the 21st century. This is a quote from an elder from the Noongar people and a very good book called Elders' Wisdom from Australia's Indigenous Leaders. We're only here for a short amount of time to do what we've been put here to do, which is to look after country. We're only a tool in the cycle of things. We go out into the world and help keep the balance of nature. It's a big cycle of living with the land and then eventually going back to it. When we talk about Indigenous culture, values, and so on, they don't stand still either. Uh, and, and they're keen on learning from each other, going forward. But they have this deep-rooted feeling for the country, and that's what we uh, blow-ins from, from originally from Europe are missing. And that's hugely important. So I think we have an interesting opportunity in Australia because we have a lot of people from overseas. I think over half of us weren't born in Australia, like myself, although I've lived here for 44 years now. Uh, and we have the longest continuous culture on the planet. Surely we can get together and do some really innovative things here and make Australia a showcase for how you back off from the Anthropocene and make it a very different trajectory that we want, that we want to go on. I hope I've convinced you that the Anthropocene is real. It certainly is real in terms of the Earth system. We have left the stability of the Holocene. We know that for certain. The stratigraphers are telling us that there is a mass of evidence that this is a new epoch in Earth history. But the point is, we're in the midst of it. It's evolving. It's changing. It's accelerating. It's a trajectory to a point that we can't yet know. So the question we need to ask ourselves before we hit that fork in the road in the Earth system, we must ask ourselves this question, where on Earth are we going? The one thing I would want people to understand is that your life on, on Earth, your 70, 80 odd years if you have a good life, what, what really do you want to make out of that? Is it only about getting wealthy and consuming more and going faster? Maybe COVID's showing us that there are some benefits of slowing down a little bit. But when you get out, at least in this wonderful land, and I've tried to spend as much of my free time as I can going around the continent, and you wonder what, you just have to wonder at what a fantastic place this actually is. And if I could go back, I don't know whether I'd go into science as deeply as I have a or do what one of my colleagues did, an ecologist at CSIRO. I'll leave you on this note. When he retired, when he hit 65, he did what most of us scientists never do, which is just to stop. He said, I want to get a combi. I'm going to go around. I'm going to learn more and more about this country and spend my last years just living in this place. So that's, that's something to think about and uh, something I'm trying to do more and more of, but I still... I think I'm a little bit too much fascinated by the science still. <laughs>